Let's talk about problem 10 on page 25. Now this is a checkup. All right, so I, I just know <laughs> I got a tip from a student who uh, already went through this piece, got this problem wrong, even looked at the score key and still said, I can't figure it out. This is a really, really, really tough one. It doesn't seem to be the same as the other ones that we did and uh, just really struggled trying to understand it and uh, even their parent or supervisor had some trouble. So let's talk about how to set up number 10 and um, I'm going to do that chart again, all right, using, so we have two planes, so plane one and plane two, we have distance, rate, time, and I'm looking at it to see what we know. It says two planes start at the same time from points that are 1,550 kilometers apart. So here's point one, here's point two, they are 1,550 kilometers apart. Now one of them is flying this direction, let's say he only goes that far, and let's say this one is going further. I should have looked at it to see who's traveling faster. Yeah, B is traveling faster, okay? So we know the two rates. Plane A is 220, and B is 280. The trick is figuring out what is the distance because the 1550 is the distance completely between those two points. So let me ask you here to imagine something. What if this plane only went 550 kilometers? Then how far would this plane have gone? Okay, did you get a thousand? So think about what you did in your head. I said this plane went 550 and asked you to figure out what this one was and you said, oh I know, I know, I know, 1550 minus 550, that one's 1000, right? What if I had said that this was 700? Then how would you figure out what this was? Well you'd say, okay I need to subtract 700 from that so that would be 850 and you are correct. So what we're going to do is let the first distance be x. Because we don't know if it's 550 or 750 or we have no idea exactly how many miles. But whatever this plane traveled, this one is going to be this quantity 1550 minus the distance that the first plane traveled. Okay, so I could now plug in 550 and boom, I would get 1,000. I could plug in 700, boom, I'd get 850. Okay, see what we're doing? I could plug in 900 and I would get 650. So whatever the first plane's distance is, this one has to be the difference. Okay, because when you add these two together, it has to equal the total distance. And now you can get the time. Let's look at our equation here. Time is distance divided by rate. So over here now I can do x over 220 and here 1550 minus x over 280. And then here's the thing, it says that these two um, times have to be equal to each other. They start at the same time, how long will it take the two planes to meet? So as soon as they're both in the air, they both took off at the same time, they're both going to meet, hopefully not crash, right? They're going to meet at this point, and we want to know what that time is. So we first have to solve for x here to figure out what this distance is. And um, how long will it take to meet? Yeah. All right, set these two equal to each other. Equals 1550 minus x over 280. <clears throat> now you have to get a big common denominator. Um, so we have to break down all the factors that make up 220, the factors that make up 280, and get this huge number, which is 3080. And that gives us a, um, 
x value, I guess actually they have they use d. Okay, that makes sense. In the score key, they're using d here instead of x, but I used x. <clears throat> so then when we solve this, um, and you get the distance, let me stick with x. I used x. Okay? I'm going to pretend like x is 440. It's not. Okay? Okay? So it's not 440, but pretend like it worked out to be 440. That's not your answer then. That was the distance. The question was, how long did it take? That's the time. So once you get your answer, after you solve this, you have to take that number and plug it in here. So 440 divided by 220, and then that would give you 2, but that's not the answer. Okay, this is a checkup. I'm not giving you the answer. You've got to finish solving this problem in order to get that. Now I'm going to show you a one quick shortcut here. If you know how to do um, ratios, did you know that if two fractions are equal, the cross products are equal? Okay. Like if I knew um, 2 over 3 equals, let's say, 10 over x, I could cross multiply and say 2 times x has to equal 3 times 10, and then divide and solve for x. So look, we could do something like that here. I could take 280 times x and set that equal to 220 times the quantity 1550 minus x. And now distribute this, solve for x, and we're not having to deal with a common denominator and all of that jazz. Okay, so that method works as well. You know what? I want to show you another faster method. This is the method that I would have used in doing this. Um, because I know that the times are going to be the same over here. Will this work? Never mind. I don't want to confuse you. I don't want to. I don't want to mess you up and show you another method that um, may go off on a rabbit trail. Okay, this is the method presented in this piece. I showed you one shortcut. We'll stop with that. Um, hopefully, that'll help you solving number ten on that checkup. And then it looks like we are at the end. The next section is pretty easy. And scientific notation, I don't think you'll have any trouble with that. And approximations, that's estimating. Um, and a lot of these you can use your calculator to uh, carry it out. Rounding to the nearest tenth, hundredth, and thousandth. That's just rounding. That's, that's elementary. And then you have review, okay? And then you're at the self-test and pace test. So hopefully uh, you are almost done and be able to finish this pace and get a good score on your pace test in a few days.